really, though, what we want to be able to do is say, well, how do we tease apart whether or not these animals, these ones that spend time close to the cat, are whether or not they're less afraid or whether or not they're more attractive. And so one way we can do this is we can look in their brains, right? So they can't self-report, but we can, we can do a lot to learn <laughs> uh, the exact state of the brain of the mouse. So here's one example of what happens in the brain of a, of a mouse, of a rodent that's exposed to a cat. So when a rodent's exposed to a cat, they're afraid, and then they run away. And then if you look at patterns of neural activity in their brain, um, you actually see that, so basically what this is, is a, um, think of it like a pathway to ultimate behavior. And what happens is that there's a cat odor, the animal smells something, there are neurons in the olfactory bulb that respond specifically to the smell of that cat. And then this information gets kind of pushed downstream to other different brain regions, the amygdala and the hypothalamus, that ultimately end up outputting fear behavior. Now, this looks different in kind from a male rodent that's exposed to an, an estrous female rodent, a female in heat. And so what this is is sexual attraction. And when you do that, <clears throat> you have, again, neural activity coursing through the brain that's almost like a reflexive kind of response. And you end up, the behavior's different, you end up with attraction. And there are different pathways, different circuits. And how this kind of helps is then we can ask the following question. So we now have the infected mouse. It's attracted to the cat, and we can kind of choose between two hypotheses. One, if it's really attracted to the animal, we would expect the brain to be similar in its activity to when you expose a male to a female. If it's afraid, but maybe just less afraid, you might expect similar activity to when we kind of expose the, the rat to the cat, but maybe just less so or something like that. That's not how the brain works, but something. And then, so what we get is some kind of little of column A, little of column B. So we actually do have the fear response when these infected animals are exposed to a cat, but we actually do see activity that's commensurate in the other kind of regions, in the other pathways, uh, similar to, it was as if, so here's another way of stating that. It was as if for certain regions of the brain that respond exclusively to sexually attractive stimuli, to attraction to female rats, it was as if when these animals were exposed to a cat, that they actually were seeing their, or, or kind of responding to this, this uh, cat instead of a female rat. Mm -hmm.